نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وكذلك جعلناكم أمة وسطا لتكونوا شهداء على الناس ويكون الرسول عليكم شهيدا صدق الله مولانا العظيم And that ladies and gentlemen was the end of my Arabic talk <laughs> Deputy Chief Army Staff from the Irish Defence Forces President of the Meirut University um, all the members, representatives of the Kennedy Institute ladies and gentlemen I greet you with the Islamic greeting of peace Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you all. And please don't be shy in replying to that. <laughs> um, just before I start, can we get this mic maybe to work? Uh, if, if we can, because evening. And it is a special pleasure to be part of a series of lectures dedicated to Senator Edward M. Kennedy and to the cause of peace which he held so dear. At the beginning of his Senate career, Senator Kennedy denounced the war in Vietnam. And 40 years later, as we have heard, in 2002, he was one of the few senators to vote against the war in Iraq. He was a strong advocate for peace and reconciliation in Ireland, a critique of South African apartheid. Senator Kennedy often set a high moral standard for the U.S. foreign policy. Today's topic is a topic of concern to every one of us, whether Muslim or not, because the topic that I'll be discussing is a topic that is affecting all mankind. It is affecting all different parts of the world. It affects the society and humanity. And it is a topic that has caused a lot of misunderstandings of, about the religion of Islam, has created notions about Muslims, the Muslim community. And unfortunately, due to these concerns and problems, the religion of Islam is highly, as I said, misunderstood. Wrongly, it is also misrepresented. So it is very important today that we discuss very openly uh, on the issue of peace, on the issue of integration, and the challenge that we all are facing in different forms, the challenge of extremism. First of all, I will discuss the importance of peace and integration from an Islamic perspective, and then discuss in detail the problem of extremism that we all are facing today, and why we need to unite against that extremism. When you talk about peace from an Islamic perspective, Islam, the word of Islam, literally, theologically, and from a linguistic perspective, comes from the root word salama, or sil, which means literally peace. When Muslims meet each other, or they meet another person of another faith, and they greet that person, the greeting is, as I greeted you all in the beginning of my talk, Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum basically can be translated as peace be with you. But at the same time, it also means I will not do thee anything disliked or evil. It is an expression of peace, Assalamu Alaikum. When we look at the definition of a Muslim, that the Prophet Muhammad 1400 years ago stated, he was once asked, Mal Muslim, who is a Muslim? He replied answering, the definition of a Muslim according to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is, Al Muslimu man saliman nasi min lisanihi wa yadihi. A Muslim is that person from whose hand and tongue other people are safe. Irrespective of their faith, irrespective of their background, irrespective of their lifestyle. A Muslim, truly a Muslim, we are talking about that definition of a Muslim that is according to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Not, of course, the definition of Osama bin Laden or Al-Qaeda, etc. When we look at 
uh, these theological uh, values of Islam, the value of, of peace, we see that it is really the, the practice or the practice of certain Muslims is in contrast to the theological and linguistic meanings of Islam. We see that most of the time when we hear about Islam or when we, uh, through the media, hear about the practices of Muslims, it is often in contrast to what the Prophet Muhammad is, uh, defined as a Muslim. It is often in contrast to the meaning of Islam, literally. So why is that? There are many reasons for that. But the first and the foremost reason is that, unfortunately, the media does not represent the majority or the mainstream voices. They usually tend to focus on the minorities when it comes to uh, those that adhere to violence those that believe in a radical interpretation of Islam, and I will talk about that in detail later on when we talk, uh, discuss extremism, that how did that extremism emerge within the Muslim world. But if Islam was really a religion of war and terror and violence, surely 1.6 billion Muslims in the world, 24% of the world population, would break all hell loose. So obviously that is not the case. So we really have to kind of understand that you know what is really what, what is really the challenge and what is really going on in the name of Islam. And as Muslims, I can tell you as a, as a Muslim Imam and theologian that the problem of, problem of extremism, for example, it is the greatest challenge the Muslim world is facing. We as Muslims are facing this, and and there is no other thing that is damaging the cause of Islam more than terror in the name of Islam, or violence in the name of Islam. And unfortunately, even though the majority of the Muslims believe this, the majority of the Muslims, they, they, they believe this and they always address this issue, unfortunately it does not make news. What does make news is, for example, when certain Muslims uh, protest at caricatures that are made of the Prophet Muhammad. And, and these protests do happen, of course, they do happen. But they do not represent the vast majority of the Muslims. But they do make the headlines. Uh, on the other hand, when we look at many other issues, we see that the mainstream voice somehow is not represented. And, and Islam, the, the perspective of Islam on peace is basically that Islam, the religion of Islam, the Prophet Muhammad, that is understood by the majority of the Muslims of the world is a religion that believes in freedom of religion, is a religion that that believes in human rights, is a, a religion that that says that human life is is it's it's uh, sacred, irrespective of whose life it is. Blood is blood, and all blood carries the same weight, whether it is the blood of a Muslim or the blood of a non-Muslim. These are, the, the, this is the view of the majority of the Muslims. And this is exactly what we find in the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. When we talk about integration, integration is something that, of course, it's uh, an, an issue, or it is one of those topics that we see that, again, Islam is not, it's misunderstood. Because the notion is, or the perception is that Islam is a religion that does not believe in integration. It's a religion of isolation. It's a religion that believes strongly in isolation. This is not the case with the vast majority of the Muslims. This is not the case how the vast majority mainstream Muslims understand their religion. Sunnis and Shias. The mainstream voice of Islam, the majority of Muslims, believe in an Islam that promotes integration. Because as you know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he, he in his life, 1400 years ago, he was himself religious, uh, he, he was a victim of religious persecution. Due to that, he had to migrate from his home city, Mecca, to the city of Medina, which is, which is 500 kilometers away. The city of Medina, at that time, most of the majority of the people that were living there were of the Jewish tradition, Jewish faith. The Prophet Muhammad, when he arrived in Medina, he, 
one of the things that happened a few months after his arrival was a festival uh, in which the Jewish community in Medina fasted on a particular day. This day in the Islamic lunar calendar is the day 10th of Muharram. They fasted on that day. Now, according to some scholars, this day was in fact the celebration of Yom Kippur, according to some Muslim scholars. The Prophet Muhammad, there is a very authentic narration that uh, two scholars of hadith that have that, that uh, Imam Bukhari as well as Imam Muslim both have classified this narration as of the highest authenticity level, this particular narration. So the narration is that the Prophet Muhammad saw the Jews fasting, observed the Jews fasting on the 10th of Muharram, and he asked them, he inquired, why are you fasting on this day? Now this is a very important hadith because it tells us about how the, how the Prophet of Islam, the founder of Islam, from whom we really can understand the true religion of Islam, and that understanding that is uh, observed and understood and practiced by the majority of the Muslim world, what, how does he look to, to integration? What was his, his understanding and approach to integration? The Prophet Muhammad first of all interacted, he engaged, and he was told the reason by the Jews, the reason we fast on this day is because we celebrate the freedom that God gave us, our nation, many thousand years ago when uh, we were saved from the Pharaoh. We celebrate this day by fasting on this particular day. The reply that the Prophet Muhammad gave was, he never said, well, okay, that's fine. That is something that, that is your practice, the practice of the majority of the people in Medina. We have nothing to do with this. He, in fact, replied by saying, we also believe in Moses. We also believe in the Prophet that you just mentioned. So we are also close to Moses like you are. In fact, the Prophet's words were that we believe that we are more closer to him in terms of following the teachings. And then he says that we will observe, like you are observing this day with fasting, we as Muslims and my community, my followers, will also fast on this day. He commanded his followers to fast on that day. However, at the same time, he said that not to assimilate, we will integrate, we will adopt this good practice, but we will keep our identity. We will fast an extra day with it. 